Many of you are probably wondering why this has not been raised. And the reason is because Jack's preaching tonight. We want, we want to make sure we didn't get it too high. But uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Jack. And you have to forgive the sound here. We're Our sound man was out Sunday. We'll get this reset and it's clicking. If you'll just ignore it tonight, we'll have it fixed on Sunday. But uh, Jack leaves tomorrow uh, to head back to uh, Africa. He goes to New York City, and there he has to purchase his plane ticket. He stays there with some Ghanaian folks, and uh, for 21 days he has to wait to get the fare on his ticket. So he leaves for New York tomorrow morning, and uh, we were I was supposed to take an offering on Sunday, and I, I forgot, as, as is my normal thing. But we have been over the years people give to Jack's ministry and and uh he said our tickets about seventeen hundred dollars and uh so I just uh called Regina on Monday and I said I know there's a little bit of money in Jack's account how much is there she said eighteen hundred and twenty dollars so that covered his plane ticket and so I'm so thankful for that and I, if anybody ever deserved an offering anybody ever gave themselves to the ministry uh, I I've known Jack for going on 20 years about 16 17 years now and i've seen him give all of his money away i've seen i've given him a check and i've seen him wire it and give it to a pastor that was preaching in a little village somewhere in the in the in the bush in ghana and just give his money away and uh, uh to help others and i've never seen anybody give so much especially somebody didn't have anything to start with and uh, it takes about $10,000 a year to fund that whole ministry. And we funded most of it for the last 15 years. Our church has by far been your largest contributor. Is that a fair statement? And so now in New York, he goes to New York, and he's going to see a lawyer and try to get a visa for his wife. Jack is qualified to apply for citizenship in the United States now. But he has to stay here for a year, and he refuses to be away from Nana, which is the nickname for his wife, uh, for that long. And so he's going to go talk to a lawyer and to see if he can get a visa for Nana. And if he can get a visa for Nana, then Jack has made up his mind that he's going to move here and be a part of this ministry. So I want you to pray about this meeting with this lawyer because if we could have Jack here just being, I used, Jack used to stay with me. And Jack can't stay with me anymore. He can now because, but when he used to stay with me, we had wooden floors in our house, and uh, a pier and beam foundation, and and at three or four in the morning, Jack would be walking the floors praying, laying under my pool table praying. And I remember one night I got up and I said, "Jack, you prayed enough. Please go to bed." And so that's just the kind of man Jack is, and Jack is the kindest hearted, most given person. And he, even though he's short in stature, he is great, a great man in this country. I've seen videos of him preaching, and he is revered and adored by his people and has some 30 different preaching points and churches that he has started and oversaw. And so I respect him a lot. And uh, when we think about making a little bit of money uh, over there, if, if they were make uh, – uh, $800 a year, $1,000 a year would be a lot of money. And so he pastors people that don't have any money. And uh, I don't know how much a month's worth of tithes are, but I remember asking him several years ago, and about $80 a month would be a good month of tithe. And so you just think about that, and you just think about how blessed we are. And so we're going to, on Sunday, if somebody won't let me forget <laughs> We're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and take an offering, and the reason I say that is because as we had eighteen hundred twenty dollars to pay for a seventeen hundred dollar plane ticket, and his car broke down Monday, and it's five hundred dollar repair on his car, and I told him that between now and the time he left for Ghana, that we'd come up with the five hundred dollars. I think we'll do better than that on Sunday. We'll raise that Sunday when church is over, and uh, we'll uh, we'll fix his car. So I love Brother Jack. He's he's a uh, we don't look much alike, but he's like a brother to me, and uh, I'm going to raise this a little bit for him, but uh, um, I'm just glad he's here tonight, and I and, uh, want him to just share his heart with us. I told him that he can preach as long as he wants to, but we leave at 8 o'clock, and he said, okay. 
So, 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 uh, good to see you in church tonight. Would it be all right if we just, uh, uh, just uh, extended your hand towards Brother Jack. Would that be all right? He prays for us all the time. And would you just, just pray a blessing on him? Lord, I love you tonight. And in life, we meet very few people that have true hearts for God and true sacrificial attitudes and lives and spirits, and they live what they believe. And uh, Brother Jack is that man. We pray a, a very special anointing and a special blessing. on. He should be praying for us, and he has, but we pray for him tonight that you would just bestow a blessing on him and uh, just be a friend to him. And uh, everybody said in Jesus' name. He has some horror stories. The devil's attacked him the last couple of years. Some, he's broke down on the side of the road for hours and hours the other day. He told me that story. And he's helpless and worthless when it comes to that. When we were building this church, he'd come over and try to help Kevin. He can't. He doesn't know how to use a broom, much less a hammer. He'd kill himself with a hammer. But he, he'll try to help if he can. But I'm just glad he's here. And everybody say, God bless Brother Jack. Thank you. You may be seated, please. Amen. I didn't know that I'm short until he mentioned it. I thought I'm taller than anyone in this house. Can you hear me? Good. I'm so glad for God to give me this opportunity. And also, I thank Pastor Wichi so much because this year has been a rough year for me. Some of the churches that I preach in this area, I show a picture to one of the pastors and he told all the pastors that I preached for them that my wife wear short sleeves and they cut me off. So now if it has not been him, I will even get money for my pay ticket. So I'm so glad that this church always be there for me and support me. I thank God for this church. I've known him for many years. And if if it has not been him, I will not come into this area. And through him that I came into this area, I have been greatly blessed. So I always pray for him and his family. And I thank God for his life and for this ministry. And I thank God for you all. And last night, I had a dream that his dad bought me a jet plane. <laughs> so, after church, I'm going to see him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you love Jesus? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening. I thank you so much for such a great blessing that this church has given to me. I pray to let them reap with million fold. Let the dream and the vision of Pastor Hultry concerning this church come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray to open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings over every member of this church. Promote their businesses and everything that they do. I thank you Lord for blessing this church. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to share with you this morning about you are not alone. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter what you are facing in life. You are not alone. And if you are not alone, then why are you afraid? And who if you're, not, if you're not alone, then who is with you? You have to find out the one that is with you and what he can do. The one that is for you is he greater and powerful than the situation that you are going through. Than the problem that you are facing in life. When you find out that 
the one that is for you, with you, in you, that will never leave you alone in time of trouble, then you don't have to be afraid or panic in time of trouble. So long as we live in this world, Jesus hasn't promised us with a smooth flight. But so long as he is with us, we will land safely. In the name of Jesus. Although problems will come in our way, but so long as Jesus Christ will never leave us alone, we will conquer the problem that will come in our way. So I want you to know that no matter what you are going through, somebody is with you. Don't be afraid and get discouraged. Amen. Turn with me in the book of uh, John 16. What? John 16. Man, who is there? Good. 16, 32 and 33. It says, Behold, the hour cometh, ye is now come, that ye shall be what? Scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Jesus Christ, his last message with his disciples, he told them that, There is a particular hour that is coming. And because of the seriousness of the hour that is coming, will make you forget about who I am. You will not even remember what I can do. You will allow the hour to make you forget about me. And this is what at times we face in life. When a situation arises in our life, we forget about who is with us and what we can do. So, and what he can do. And that make us panic and fear takes over. And we live in it. But if only. We can remember. That we are not alone. There is somebody. That is with us. And the one that is with us. Is powerful. Than the hour. That is coming to you. If only you can remember. I want you to understand that. There is no hour that will come in your way will beat you down. Problems will come. Difficulties will come. Hardship will come. But so long as we know that there's somebody on our side, we will never, never be defeated. We will conquer. So Jesus said there is an hour that is coming. You shall be scattered Every man to his own and shall leave me alone. And yet, I am not alone. Amen? You all will leave me, but there is somebody that will not leave me in time of trouble, in time of hardship, in time of difficulties, in time of trouble. He won't leave me. Amen? At times, When situation arises in your life, people turn away from you. But I want you to understand that people will leave you. Everybody will leave you, but God will never leave you. Amen? And if God will not leave you, then what problem can destroy you? There is no problem that can conquer you So long as Jesus Christ is on your side. So long as we live in this world, sickness will come. Problems will come. Difficulties will come. 
Because the God of this world is Satan. He won't leave us alone. He will attack. But so long as Jesus Christ is on our side, hallelujah, any problem that comes in our way, we will conquer it. Can you believe that? Amen. And yet, I am not alone because the Father is with me. See, it's easy to forget about God when problem comes. Because these disciples that Jesus is talking about, they were with Jesus Christ. They saw the miracles that Jesus performed. They saw Jesus walking on the sea of Galilee. They saw Jesus call Lazarus to come back to life after he has been in the tomb for four days and four nights. They saw blind, seen, crippled, walking, dumb, spoke, deaf, head. They saw all these miracles and they saw what Jesus Christ can do. But Jesus said, although you have seen all these miracles that have performed, but there is a particular hour that is coming and the seriousness of the hour will make you forget about who I am and what I can do. I want you to understand that there's no problem that is bigger than Jesus Christ. Anything that you are facing, is that cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure? Whatever you are going through, Jesus Christ is bigger than that problem. Fear not. All that you got to do is know that you are not alone. And if you are not alone, then who is with you? Jesus. And if Jesus is with you, then who else can be against you, church? Amen? John 23 for me, please. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have what? Help me. In me you may have what? Amen. Say, so in me you may have what? Peace. In the world you have what? Tribulation. But the good news is be of what? Good cheer. For I have what? Overcome the world. And the reason why Jesus said that in this world you have tribulation. Let's go to Genesis. And find out why he said that. Genesis. The reason why Jesus said that in me you have what? Peace. But in this world you have what? Trouble. But be of good cheer. You'll be surrounded by problems. You'll be surrounded by difficulties, hardship. But don't worry. I have overcome them. Amen. And the reason why Jesus said that in this world, you have tribulation is, let's read Genesis 3.17. Then to Adam he said, because that you have you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. What happened? Curse is the ground for you are what? Sick. When God created the earth, God blessed the earth. There was no evil. There was no sickness. There was no pain. Earth was full of peace, joy, happiness. Until Adam sinned. And sin changed everything. So the earth, which is the world that we live in now, is not the same world that God created. It's changed from good to evil. From health to disease. From riches to poverty. It's changed. And Satan has taken over. That is why Jesus promised us. That he's going to prepare another word. 
place for us. Because this world is no longer for the people of God. God did not create you to live in an evil world. Amen. He created you and created earth that looks like heaven for you. Until Adam sinned and everything changed. And that is why Jesus came to redeem you. from Because God did not create you for evil to control your life. So Jesus came to redeem you from the curse that was pronounced in the Garden of Eden. The curse of disease, the curse of poverty, the curse of death. Jesus broke it on the cross and set you free. But so long as we live in this world and the God of this world is Satan, we will have tribulation. Amen? Because this world is full of evil. So he promised us that he is going to prepare another what? Place for us. And after he has finished, he will do what? Come and take us there. So while we are waiting, hallelujah, he hasn't left us alone. That's why he said, in this world, you have what? Tribulation. But church, be of good cheer. For I'm not going to leave you alone. Sickness will come. Pain will come. Poverty will come. Hardship will come. High time will come. Depression will come. But I want you to know that I have overcome all these problems. So when they come, they cannot overpower you. They cannot overcome you because I have destroyed them for your sake. Amen. And also, I haven't left you alone. I am with you till the end of the world. Amen. So when sickness comes, don't worry, church. Don't be discouraged. Jesus Christ is powerful than the problem you are facing. It's powerful than sickness. It's powerful than the pain. It's powerful than any problem that you are going through. So be of good cheer in time of trouble. Say, rejoice evermore. Play with that season and in everything what? Give thanks. Because he is on your side. So I want you to understand tonight it doesn't matter what you are going through. So long as you have Jesus Christ on your side, you will conquer it. You will overcome it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand with me. Say in the name of Jesus I set myself free. Satan I want you to know I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus. I command you to leave me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You belong to Jesus. You don't belong to Satan. He said, in me you have what? Peace. In me you have healing. You have peace. You have joy. You have prosperity. You have riches. You have blessings in the world. You have tribulation. But I want you to understand. You are not for the world. But you are for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So if you are for Jesus. Then I have good news for you. That you have peace. Joy. Whatever you are looking for. He will provide. So stop worrying. Don't be discouraged. He will never, never leave you alone. This is the secret that David saw. And said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because David found now that he wasn't alone. For the spirit of God was with David. But today, I want you to understand that the spirit of God is not just with you. The spirit of God is in you and Jesus Christ lives in you. You are more than David. You are more than Joshua. You are more than the prophets. You can do more than what they did. Hallelujah. Because you have more than what they had. 
God didn't live in any prophet. They had the anointing of God upon themselves. But today, God lives in you. You have been born again by his spirit. Hallelujah. You are more than them. You can do more than them. And I stand in the shoes of Jesus Christ. And I command every problem you are facing to leave you alone now in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. I break every yoke from your life in Jesus name. May God bless you. Even, even death. Jack always spits all over the microphone. Even, even death is, uh, even though the Bible says it's our worst enemy and our last enemy, even in death he's with you. You don't even have to fear death. And sometimes, as I said Sunday, the greatest miracle is not to be delivered from high blood pressure, but to be able to endure it and with a smile on your face. To be able to endure pain as a good soldier. But uh, And the greatest miracle is not to have peace outside of the storm, but the greatest miracle is to have peace in the storm. Anybody can have peace outside of the storm, but he gives us peace in the storm. Isn't that beautiful? So I know you're in a storm. Some of you are in a storm. My mother's about to lose uh, in the next few days, she's going to lose a brother, a sister-in-law, and a brother-in-law. That's a storm. And her brother's one of the sweetest men I've ever known. And and uh, her her sister-in-law is the second wife that my Uncle John will have lost to cancer in just a few years' time. And she's going through a storm. But I promise you, when you shake her hand tonight, she'll smile. And you'll feel peace just being around her. And that's not because of my mother. That's because of the God that lives in my mother. And so I, I, I want to I say it again. The greatest, the greatest miracle is not to have peace outside the storm. The greatest miracle is to have peace in the storm. But having said that, I spoke again just the other day to the pastor, a, a dear friend of mine. He pastors a huge church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, it's called Truth Church. And back in when the economy was really bad, he told me, he said, you know, I said, I said, how are things going? You know, I know the economy's bad and things are tough all over. He said, well, whenever the stock market dropped, we had a vote at church. And we decided, and you think, you've heard Jack pray that prayer. Raise your hand with me and say, I don't belong to you, Satan. I belong to Jesus. And we take that lightly. That is a very powerful prayer. I don't belong to you. I'm not part of your kingdom. I opt out of your kingdom, and I opt in to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And he said, so we chose as a church. We voted. We had a physical vote on a Sunday morning. We opted out of the recession. And in the first year of the the recession, their income and their church doubled because they decided they voted that they wouldn't participate in it because they were part of another world. They weren't a part of this world. They belonged to the kingdom of Jesus Christ, not the kingdom of whoever's president or whoever's pope or whoever's whatever. And so uh, you need to opt out. How many of you, have you really, does anybody in here just really love Jesus? He said it best. He said, you can be all alone, but the Father's always going to be with you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you got it better than David or you got it better than Elijah or Elisha because he's in you, not just with you, not just moving on you, not just anointing you, but he is inside of you, speaking through you. And so I, uh, I, when he prayed that prayer, I've heard him pray that sort of prayer a bunch over the last 17 or 18 years. And so, But I bowed my head for the first time I really listened to it. And I, as he prayed that prayer, I just felt goosebumps. And so, would you bow your head with me? If you got a situation, let's, let's, let's make this a prayer. Satan, we don't belong to you. We're in the world, but we're, we're not of the world. We, we've been bought with a price. There's been bloodshed, innocent bloodshed, especially for us. When he was on the cross, we were on his mind, and and so we don't have 
to tolerate. We don't have to put up with. We can have peace. We don't have to have the mental turmoil and pain and misunderstandings. We can have peace. And we, right now, we demand it, that you separate yourself from causing us that turmoil. And we choose, we choose to be asleep in the back of the ship. We're not worried about the winds and the waves, but we're going to put our faith and our confidence on the one who walked on the water. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Satan, accept our estimation that we do not belong to you, but that we belong to Jesus. And somebody that believes that in this house tonight, say in Jesus' name. Would you say it again with a little conviction, in Jesus' name. And even as I face my ultimate enemy, if I face high blood pressure, if I face cancer, if I face death, when I face those enemies and I walk through those valleys, I choose peace because of what Jesus did for me. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Let's stand together. I love you, Jack. You're a man of God, and I love you. And how many of you love Brother Jack? If you never met him, you need to spend some time with him. Let's give him a hand tonight for all he did for us. Amen. And maybe with a little bit of a blessing of the Lord, he'll be back with Nana this time next year. And uh, and uh, we'll we'll have to put up with him. Regina will have to put up with him forever, and I don't know if that's possible or not. <laughs> so, and uh, Regina's the usher tonight, so we want to take up a good offering. If you have an offering to give, we'd love to. You. Regina's going to be the best offering taker in the world. She's not going to let you out without giving something. So, so uh, how many of you glad you came to church tonight? I don't know about you, I just felt a deep little move. I felt the ripple of the Holy Ghost kind of rumbling deep, kind of not just a ripple on the top, but like a, you can't tell this by looking at the ocean, but there are these powerful currents that are moving beneath the surface, and they're causing things to happen. They, they control climates, and they control continents, and they control the movement. They control so many things, and we can't even see it. I feel that depth of the moving of the Spirit of the Lord. It's about to begin to control some things in some lives, and you're not even really going to know where it comes from or where it's going. You're just going to feel the leading of the Lord. I'd like to do that starting right now. How about you? I'll go where you want me to go. I'll walk where you want me to walk. I'm going to tell you there's a miracle happening, and I want you to keep praying. There's, there's, there's some miracles in the mix. There are miracles happening in the kingdom of God. There are specific miracles with this church's name on it happening right now. And I want to pray that God finishes that. How many of you will believe with me that God's going to finish that miracle happening right now? And, you know, miracles need help. Travis Yingling has been a big part of this miracle today. Marty Spurlock has been a big part of this miracle today. People that have never walked in these doors have been a big part of what God's trying to do in this church. And I just want to say thank you to all of you. And, uh, well, I'm excited about being a part of the kingdom of God. And, and uh, uh, God bless you today. Thank you for coming. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday. It's going to be a great day in the house of the Lord on Sunday. You don't want to miss it. Be sure and hug Brother Jack's neck. Be sure and give him the offering as you leave. God bless you. In Jesus' name.